So here is the RGB 20SX by Pow Kitty. You can see that the box is actually pretty fancy. Nothing really on the sides except some sort of bare minimum stats of nothing. And I got the blue color, which I was really excited about. I had to wait a little bit until that came in. But yeah, the box is kind of cool. I don't know if they were trying to go for a boxing match with the red and the blue. I'm not really sure, but I do like the way that it kind of looks a little retro, looks a little um, beat up maybe. But uh, yeah, so keep making your boxes a little cool like that. Here is just some info on the SD card. And you can see that they sent over a 64 gig card. We will put that in there. And in the bottom of the box are the infamous stickers. We will check these out later on. We also have a USB-C type cable to USB-A just to let you know this is not a data cable. I tried that afterwards. We get two stickers and a manual, which doesn't say a whole lot. Here is the original tiger sticker and here is the new sticker. It's like a tiger, deer, dragon, bear, Yulin creature, mythological, weird Chinese creature. I don't know. It's an alien. We'll check it out later. So now that I have the SD card in before I boot it up, let's take a look at the device. You can see that they have the regular Nintendo joysticks. There's a couple of USB ports at the bottom. And we have the infamous one-to-one -one aspect ratio screen that is on the RGB 30. And just regular switch style joysticks. There's a start and select and a function button on the front. There's also a speaker on the front. We have a mini HDMI port on the top. volume buttons on the side. There is also, mine was shipped with an OS card, operating system card that's a 16 gig, and it was in the device. So we'll put that back in so we can actually use the device. The charging port is on the left, headset jack in the middle, and the data port is on the right. And we have, that's where our games card is. And at the top, we have a power button and a reset button right, right underneath. Get used to the reset button because when we boot it up, there's a couple systems that I couldn't quite get out of. So you definitely are going to have to hit the reset button. Hopefully that, that'll be fixed with custom firmware. We shall see. Big crazy sticker on the back and the gigantic shoulder buttons. They're not as, well, they are kind of loud. They're not as loud as the Anbernic, uh 28XX, but they are still pretty loud. I'm really digging this uh, transparent blue color. I'm glad that I got that instead of the uh, different colors. I think there is a yellow. Now something that I'm noticing right off the bat, the D-pad looks pretty loose. I think it'll still be usable, but you can see I can just kind of wiggle it. I noticed as I was pressing it down, it just, it wiggles. It's a wiggly little guy. So hopefully it doesn't go completely flush. We shall see. The buttons feel pretty good. I mean, the D-pad feels good too. Um, it's just, it's very loose and it presses down, seems to press down quite a bit. 
We'll see how that translates in great gameplay. Really fancy about the joysticks. Like I said, they're Nintendo style Switch joysticks. And it feels pretty solid. It feels actually pretty nice to hold. It's comfy in the back. So we'll see how that works when I turn it on. So it's running unofficial OS, which is sort of a fork of Jellos, Jell OS. It's got an emulation station on it. And this is taking forever to boot up. Forever. So just be aware of that. Okay, eight hours later. Actually, it wasn't really eight hours, but <laughs> it did. I think it took over a minute. I think if I was timing it correctly. The screen looks really, really, really nice. It's definitely uh, reminiscent of the RGB 30. It's exactly supposed to be the same exact screen. So they just threw it in a vertical handheld. And you can see it's emulation station in the background. It's a Linux based handheld. So nothing super new. So let's just get right into the gameplay. Why not? Here we have Genesis or Mega Drive. And there is a bezel on here, but I didn't change anything right away. The D-pad does feel mushy. I mentioned that just a little bit ago when checking it out, and you can definitely feel that with gameplay. It's not awful. Um, it actually just kind of feels like a warning controller. But it's definitely going to be something that you're going to have to get used to. You might like it. I mean, I don't think that it's terrible. Am I the only one that loves Castlevania's music? I literally could just have this play all the time. <laughs> Let me know in the comments below. You may not be a super huge fan of maybe the gameplay, but the music is... You gotta admit the music is awesome. I love it. I, I don't know if... I don't know. I'm torn on the bezels. I kind of like that there's no black bars, but also it does seem like it's almost squishing it a little bit so that the bezels look just a little bit bigger than they should be, if that makes sense. Buttons and D-pad, I mean, other than getting used to the mushy D-pad, feels really good. So here's what I'm talking about with the D-pad. You can see that it almost goes flush to the case. I mean, it's, it's practically right there. It's definitely usable. And I don't think it's really affecting my gameplay. It's just something that you definitely are going to have to get used to if you're sensitive to, you know, overly mushy D-pads. The buttons, the buttons are normal. I mean, they don't really go down. They're almost flush with the case. Not terrible. So here's one of the systems that definitely 
takes advantage of the one to one aspect ratio. Now I didn't turn off the bezels. I realize that now, but you can see it fills out the screen pretty nicely. You can change in the settings and I'll do that later to change the uh, bezels. We'll turn them off and we will fill out the screen and I'll die while I'm at it. Why not? <laughs> But arcade games, especially the vertical ones, are just going to look amazing on here. Look at this. I love this game. I don't know if, it, if you haven't played this game and you're a big arcade shmup fan, you definitely need to play this game. I realize it's pretty close to like Giga Wing and th there, there's a handful of them that are very similar, but they're all just really good. Ugh. This is not centipede. It said centipede in the menu and it's not centipede. It's millipede. Okay. This is weird. I don't know if you can see this, but the bezel at the bottom, I appreciate the cool arcade bezel, but it's actually, if you take your guy down all the way, it actually just gets, you know, you can't see him. So the game cheats if you have the bezels on <laughs> is what I'm getting to. So if you exit out the game, then you press the start button. You can go to the main menu and we will turn off by linear filtering because no. And here under decoration set, that's actually bezels. So you can see that there's a bunch of different be bezels for all the different systems, but we are just going to select none and then no bezels. And then we will go back into not centipede, but millipede. And you can see, finally, you can see that whole screen. So just be aware that some of the bezels, even though they're cute, you might want to turn them off on certain systems. There's a little bit of stutter with this game, but I, that generally seems to be a thing unless you have a super powerful system. So PSP, I mean, there was a little skip there, but PSP is working for the most part. 
it's just a little strange because the aspect ratio of PSP is 16 by 9 and this is not a 16 by 9 screen so we definitely get some black bars on the top and the bottom. So if you're okay with that you can definitely get away with playing a couple PSP games. So we'll hop over to Dreamcast. And it looks like it's playing. So in gameplay, there's definitely a little bit of slowdown. You can hear that the audio is a little laggy, stuttering. Gameplay isn't as stuttery. It's definitely playable. Not as smooth as the credits at the beginning, though. Sometimes when you play a different level, the audio may stutter and it may not. Now, just to show you in the game settings, you can definitely go down to per game configuration and go to whatever system. I'm selecting Dreamcast and I'm checking out the different emulators, the different core options. I did go through and I didn't see a real big difference in any of these cores. So like I said before, per game, per core, you may have to play around with the cores and whatnot. And you can see this one's running really terrible. So don't use this one, at least for this game. Now you can go back into PPSSPP, but you can see that we don't have access to Vulcan and it, the resolution was already on 1x. Auto frame, frame skip is already on, it's skipping one frame. So there's not a whole lot of settings that if the game is already skipping, it seems like it's down at the bare minimum. So again, the higher games may have some stuttering, may not be playable, so definitely just check that out and it's going to be on a per game basis if it's working for you. But here we have Ridge Racer and I don't see any issues with Ridge Racer and I'm surprised. Sometimes this game is a little bit harder to run. Now here is a treat. If you have a Pico 8 license, you already paid for it, you can take those files that I've showed before in a couple different videos. It's the DAT file and the DYN file, and you can throw them in the Pico 8 folder on your SD card, boot it back up, and connect it to Wi-Fi. Bam! You have connection to native Pico 8, and you can go online and go into the Splore menu. And you can play my favorite game, which is Super Disc Box. This is a fantastic game. Look at how awesome Pico 8 looks on this screen. It's just fantastic. If you are a, P if you are a Pico 8 lover, you definitely need to get either the RGB 30 or one of these and play Pico 8 to your heart's content.
Also with the awesome mouse pad that you probably noticed in the background, Go Game Geek sent me this device as a review unit. All opinions are my own and they did not see this video beforehand and have no input on it. Thank you Go Game Geek for sending me this device because it's awesome. Since Super Smash, Smash Brothers wasn't running completely 100%, a little laggy, I'm going to go into the settings and change out the core for the emulator. And I end up using all of the cores. There's, I think, four in here, and none of them really are 100%. This one you can see actually ends up playing worse. So again, with each of the higher end systems, you may have to pl play around with the cores and per game and just see if that works. You can see we have some graphical glitching, so that's fun. Okay, so what's weird to me is we couldn't get Super Smash to run 100%, but F-Zero X is running pretty decently. I actually forgot to turn on the FPS counter, but I'm not noticing any slowdowns, or it's barely noticeable at all. So, maybe every once in a while you get a good N64 game to play. So, the uh, Pow Kitty RGB 20SX. I actually really like this. It's definitely not for everybody. I mean, if you're not a vertical handheld user, if this doesn't even interest you looking at a vertical handheld, it's definitely not gonna be for you. I found it actually pretty comfy as you were holding, as I'm holding it and playing it, my fingers just sort of rested right on these shoulder buttons. I know a lot of people were, you know, it depends on your hand size. Obviously I don't have giant hands, smaller hands, so it really depends on you but I think that it's not bad. Plus we have the cool little tiger, dragon, bear, deer, whatever this animal is, sticker. I think it's supposed to be some sort of mythological Chinese creature based off of it. I don't know. Maybe somebody was on drugs, I'm not sure. Anyway, <laughs> but it's cute and it doesn't cover the screen. It just covers the little bezel. So I may or may not take this off, but it's, cute. I mean, if you're going to give it to a kid, I suppose, or you just like the sticker. So because it's got a cute little smiley face right there. I wasn't playing my RGB 30 on purpose because I didn't want it to skew my whole first impressions of the 20 SX. And I don't know, I'm going to go back and forth and I'll have another video out. I think maybe on my thoughts on comparing the two and I think that'll be a good time for me to put custom firmware. I've always wanted to put custom firmware Arc OS on here. I'm still unfortunately running Jealous, uh, Jell OS, which isn't bad, but it's not supported anymore. So now it's going to be called Rocknix, or it is called Rocknix. So but the big thing that I'm not a huge fan of is the battery, um, the, the goofy charging issue on here. I didn't try it on the 20. So I don't know if that's an issue. I haven't heard that it's an issue. I could be wrong about that, but hopefully maybe that will be fixed. So we'll see. I'll do a video definitely on uh, throwing some custom firmware on both of these, but I, I like it. And you know, I'm actually, my preference is a horizontal handheld. I just like it. I find them just, a, you know, my personal preference. And they just seem to be a little bit more comfortable. But there is something to be said about this screen, this. I think I still prefer horizontal handhelds, but honestly, the only vertical that really has ever won me over is my Miu Mini Plus. I rave about that device. It's just fantastic. I don't know if this will take the place of the Mio Mini Plus. It's not as pocketable, but I definitely see myself maybe throwing this by my bed and maybe trying to jam out a couple games. Right here, Pico 8, Pico 8. If you follow me, you follow my channel. 
I love Pico 8. You should definitely check it out if you purchased it because you have to spend 15 bucks to actually purchase a license, but that's it. Then you get access to all the games. You also have those files, so you can throw it on this, this, all of your devices, and then you have native Explorer. So all I did was seriously just take it and throw, and you hit start Pico 8, and then it just goes, takes a moment, then it just goes into Explorer. So there you go. I mean, it's just, it's fantastic. So you can play all your Pico 8 games till your heart's content. One thing that I will say, the downside of this that I mentioned before when checking out the buttons, the D-pad seems to press in a little much. It's almost flush with the case, but it works. I, I do appreciate that it's a rubber membrane connection, but it's almost too much of a rubber membrane connection. So I may, if it bothers me enough, I may go in and possibly throw some tape on there buttons seem to be fine. It's not a huge issue. I would rather it be mushy than clicky, but that's, again, that's just my personal preference. I don't know if it really needs two analog sticks. I do like to have one because with this form factor, I've shown off a lot of arcade games and it's fantastic for arcade games. It's fantastic for Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Pico 8, and arcade games. You get vertical arcade games. And they look amazing on here. So you can definitely use one of these sticks. You can use the mushy D-pad and go from there with it. I did mention earlier about Dreamcast and PSP and even N64 being on here, which they're bonus systems. I always say that they're at the end of this limit, you can definitely play them. You probably won't be able to play the whole catalog, but a couple games on here. Metal Slug always works on PSP. You can generally always get Sonic to work on Dreamcast, a couple different games. So don't get this if you are looking to have a vertical form factor, PSP, Dreamcast, and N64 game. I did have some issues with playing some of the games tested out Super Smash, but then it was weird because Super Smash was not working very well, but then Zero X was working. So you'll have to play around with the games. You'll have to play around with the cores. You can go in and go to per game configuration or the advanced settings, to whichever way you go into it. You can definitely choose which core you're gonna be using. Hopefully something might work. You may have to do that per game, depending on the system. If you are intrigued by this at all, I think you might like this. If you are immediately saying, what on earth is this? It might not be for you. <laughs> so it's not for everybody, but that's why we have tons of handhelds. So let me know in the comments below, is the RGB 20 SX everything that you've wanted and more? Are you gonna get one? Do you have one? Do you love it? Is it awesome? Or did you wish that you got this? Or are the one-to-one -one aspect ratio screens not for you? They're not for everybody. Depends on what you want to play. As always, be sure to like, subscribe, and even share this video with someone who really wants a vertical handheld that they can play some arcade games, Pico 8, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and really everything else. Thanks for watching. Stay awesome, everyone, and go play some games.